Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. This massive resin 3D printer is the Epax X156. And in today's video, I'll be showing you some of the crazy things that you can print with this huge resin 3D printer, as well as giving you my official thoughts and review on this machine. A few quick notes before we jump into the review. Epax did send this over to me for review purposes. They're not paying me for this video and they're hearing the feedback and seeing this video for the very first time, just like you are here while watching the video and all the feedback is my own. So as you can see here, this printer is an absolute beast of a machine and it takes up a good amount of space here on my desk. So you can anticipate if you're planning on picking up one of these big machines, you're gonna need a good amount of space and a really sturdy table to sit this on while it's up and running and printing. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of me unboxing the machine, but it came extremely well packaged. It was double packed in some heavy duty cardboard and some other protective materials. It does weigh over a hundred pounds. So you're gonna need probably two sets of hands to help get it up onto whatever space that you're looking at moving it onto. And it's a really nice heavy duty unit. I did end up slightly cracking the display when I foolishly lifted this up onto the table by myself. Yeah, that was a dumb, a really dumb idea. You also have this really large vat that you can slide in and out of the printer and it's held down by those two screws on each side of the vat. You'll see here that's got a door panel that'll open up. It's got the large acrylic display. It's got that orange acrylic, which is Epax's trademark look there that they go for. On the inside, you have an angled build plate with handles, which makes it really easy to maneuver and work with this, or at least as easy as possible with that massive build plate. Like you see with a lot of other resin 3D printers, it has that nice touchscreen Chi2 Systems interface. Also fine on the side of the unit is where you're gonna find the power plug, the on and off switch, the port that you're gonna use for your USB stick to load your files. There's also an ethernet port on the side of the unit, but I'm not sure that there's any network capabilities at this time for the machine. Busting out my laptop, telling you about some of the finer details about that screen that's on this huge printer. It has a 15.6 inch 4K color LCD screen that comes out to a build volume of 345 by 194 by 400 millimeters. That is a really large build volume. One thing to note is that this screen is not a mono screen, so you can expect a little bit of a shorter lifespan when it comes to utilization of that, as well as a good bit slower print speeds than what you've seen on a lot of the other resin 3D printers that are out there in a smaller format. Most of those larger screen printers don't have a lot of mono screen options just yet. But Epax is working on that and has some mono screen upgrades coming later this summer for this machine. For a quick size comparison, let's take a look at it against some of the other Epax units. This is the Epax E10. It's their mid-size mono screen resin 3D printer. This machine is absolutely amazing, prints wonderfully. As you can see, quite a size difference between these two printers. And then we also have the Epax E6, which almost looks comically small next to its big, big brother. Obviously, we're gonna have a massive difference between build volume, print size, as well as cost between the E6, the E10, and even the X156. The larger you go, obviously, the more expensive it's gonna get. So let's take a look at some of the prints that I've gotten off of the unit. So the first thing I wanna do is just really test out printing some cool things on that big build plate. So I went to none other than Fotis Mint and grabbed his Captain America and Thanos busts that come in multiple pieces and I was able to print that in about 25 hours. With that same job, I also printed one of Loot Studio's 75 millimeter scale miniature figures and I think it turned out great. I did end up having one issue where the mace that this character has uh, broke, I think it might've been during the cleanup process and I just lost track of where it was. Obviously here, the base was printed in a different color. I think I ended up having the base failed on the print as well. So that's why I reprinted it with a separate job here that we'll take a look in just a second. I did print those all in Epax hard resin, which is one of the resins that they recommend for the machine. And it turned out as expected beautifully. This is one of my favorite resins to actually print with. And if you can get your hands on that resin, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. The details on these photos meant bus just look absolutely stunning. So I then wanted to print off some additional miniatures on that build plate from Loot Studio. So I printed off a handful here. Uh, the, again, the prints turned out as expected. They look incredible. Even the really tiny version, this 35 millimeter scale of that same 
print that I did earlier uh, came out really good. The mace printed properly that time and came off of the supports properly. I also printed this troll tablet stand from Art of Games. That's a free download that you can find over on his Gumroad. This file is really cool, holds all of your different tablets. Also, if you're interested in a pre-printed version of this and you don't have a resin 3D printer, I sell these over on my Etsy shop. Links down below. But again, the details came out fantastic on this machine. And the resin that I used was Seartech Fast Creamy for this print job. Now you're probably thinking, Uncle Jesse, that is a huge resin 3D printer. Why are you printing small statues and miniatures when you should be printing a helmet? And that's exactly what I did. So I went off and printed this cyber Oni mask created by Orbis that you can find over on NicoIndustries.com. This was printed in multiple jobs and took uh, probably about three days total to print. I uh, printed all of the teeth, obviously separately there, that was printed and the Seartech Fast, their neon green that they sell. And then all of the other parts were printed in the Seartech Fast smoky black. I did grab some footage of this before I applied clear coat to the print because I did want this to look as glossy and shiny and cool looking as possible. I think the results of this look absolutely fantastic and I'm really thrilled with the print job. I can clearly see some of the print lines and details that are appearing in the mask from the printer. That's to be expected. It's still way, way cleaner than what I would ever seen on an FDM 3D printer, especially in the print time that it took to print all of these. The results are just absolutely mind blowing. Uh, yeah, and of course it fits my face as well. And I did want to take a minute to say thank you to today's video sponsor, which is obviously Nico Industries. I ended up purchasing this file from Orbis, who had listed it over on Nico's site, and I probably would have never seen it unless it was listed up on Nico's site. That's right, you can now design and sell your own files directly on Nico Industries. You can also print and sell 3D prints directly through Nico Industries as well. And obviously, if you're interested in buying some of Nico's files that he offers through there, you can find those as well. It's the place to go if you're interested in gaming or cosplay related 3D printing files. Thanks again, Nico, for sponsoring today's video. So one thing that I haven't mentioned is the price of this machine. It costs, as of the time of recording this video, $2,799 over on Epax's website. Yes, it is an expensive resin 3D printer, but it is really well manufactured and it's providing me with really great results. The one downside that you're gonna run into this machine or any of these other larger resin 3D printers that are available at this time is that they're not rocking those mono screens. So the lifespan of that display is gonna be pretty limited. And with that lower life expectancy of the displays with just what I've printed here for this video, I'm already up to about 150 hours you know, which is sitting relatively close to that 500 hour minimum lifespan that you typically might run into with displays of this size. Another thing that I need to mention is that this machine is really loud when it's up and running. It's got fans, multiple fans on it, but they're really loud to try and keep it cool while this unit is running. And it's just something that you're gonna to need to be aware of and planning accordingly of where you're gonna sit a machine like this with fans that are running that loud. One of the challenges that comes with working with these larger resin 3D printers is this huge vat down here. So this holds about two and a half liters of resin. So two and a half of those huge bottles of resin. That's a huge amount of resin. And if you get a print failure, it is wildly painful to try and filter that back out and manage that huge vat and not completely spill a ton of your resin. Another challenge that I have with the vat is that there's no handles on them. So it makes it really difficult to hold it and maneuver it when it comes to actually dumping out your resin and cleaning it out. I honestly had zero issues leveling the build plate as well. I ended up re-leveling it once I received it. Everything's been printing. I leveled it that one time and it's been running great ever since. I've had a few print failures here and there, so I might end up just scuffing up the build plate a little bit further. One additional challenge that you might run into while working with that massive build plate is that you're gonna have a hard time, in some instances, removing prints from that build plate. So. This one right here is a perfect example of where Wham Bam Flex Plate would be absolutely perfect for this unit. And that's for sure something I'm gonna be looking to add to this one right here. So who is this machine really for? It's for anybody that needs to do really large resin print jobs, obviously. But the build plate is large enough for full-size helmets, or at least most full-size helmets, like an Iron Man helmet, 
should be able to fit relatively well on that build plate. Also, Dark Knight FX over on Instagram recently got his hands on one of these as well and has been printing some really cool masks and other things over on his page on his Instagram. I'll have links to showing off what he's printing for cosplay purposes on this machine. And again, it's really for that end in my mind is a perfect example of why this machine exists. If you're looking to print some really big replica props all in one piece, this is the way to go. Honestly, if you're looking at printing on just a whole big build plate full of miniatures, you might be better off suited with going with something like the Epax E10 or buying two Epax E10s. You'll probably have a little bit of an easier time working with that build volume and that machine over something like this, as well as the price, especially when it comes to printing some smaller detailed miniatures. Obviously, if you're printing busts and statues, this thing is going to be fantastic for this as well. Someone had posted over on Facebook that they had printed the full Terminator arm on this as well. Oh, that looked so friggin' cool. So some of you out there might be thinking this kind of looks like a Piopoli Phenom L, and as far as I can tell, it really is other than a different door. From comments that I found over on the Piopoli Facebook group or on the Epax one, it does appear that these are pretty much the exact same units with the same components. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Competition is really good for everyone, especially the consumer. And it's similar to what we've seen on the FDM side of things where there's now about a bajillion different Creality CR10s floating around here. But what this means for you out there is that if you need replacement parts, a new VAT, a new build plate, uh, a new screen, you're able to pick up a Piopoli Phenom L version or an Epax X156. Again, as far as I can tell, these are more or less the same units. And another thing you want to consider is the support for these machines. Obviously, if you're US-based, the Epax is probably going to be a no-brainer for you because they are a US-based company. And if you're trying to call them at any of the US business hours, you'll more than likely get a hold of someone to help answer your questions or help troubleshoot any of the printer issues that you're running into. And would I recommend this machine? Yes, wholeheartedly yes. I would recommend, if you're interested in a really large resin 3D printer, this is a fantastic machine and I'm seeing amazing results from this unit. And I would definitely recommend you grabbing one of these if you're in the market for it. But keep in mind that it does not have that mono screen. Epax has again stated that they are working on mono screen support display options uh, as upgrades coming later this summer. When that will happen, I don't know. Pricing behind that, I don't know. And once that happens, these larger X156 machines will be really hard to beat when it comes to printing really large things like masks or helmets. So hopefully you all enjoyed this review of the Epax X156. You'll definitely be seeing some really large prints that I have upcoming here off of this machine in some upcoming YouTube short videos. Also, again, a huge thank you to Nico for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested in finding out more about how you can sell your own files or prints over on Nico's site, you'll find links down below. And thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.